small dogs, no matter what the breed, can be much more fearful because size matters. They're very vulnerable. If you walked around the size of an ankle, <laughs> you know, the height of an ankle, you might be afraid too. Oh, there's giants all amongst us here. And, and one of the ways that they, they overcompensate is by becoming very vocal. I mean, how many of us have talked to people who own big dogs who say, oh, those little dogs, they're just awful. They come running right up to my, lip, my big dog and ring, 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 ring. And they do a lot of times because they found that the best defense is a good offense. <laughs> and I'm going to go get him before he gets me. I mean, some of these dogs, if they're terriers, they just are um, all guts, no brains. <laughs> I don't really want to say no brains because they do have brains. It's just that it's overridden by the impulse to attack. So Sophie, my, my little girl Sophie, I mean, she, she was just, she didn't matter who they were. That's the only dog in our family that Luke was afraid of. And she's this big, you know, and here he is, this bully. He's scared to death of Luke. The other dogs are scared. And Luke is a, is a pity bully, bull terrier, mixy thingy. Um, anyway, he, you know, he, he struts. He walks along like this. And Sophie goes, don't come close to me. You do that, you're dead meat. And Luke goes, okay, fine. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Just shows you, you know, what you can do. But, but size does matter. Um, this is a, a, very a very sad little video. It's a dog in total conflict, very afraid, but wants to make friends. So that's what you people do when the dog snarls as they yell at the dog. And what does she do? She snarls more. Now what was that? That was a grin, you guys. That was a, submi a submissive grin. She went from snarling to, can you see it? There's a, there's a snarl and when she comes up and her tail goes down and she starts to do it again, a little grin. Hard to tell when you're right there, believe me. I can't eat, I'm too nervous. So is this dog submissive? Yes. Would it bite you? Yes. Yeah. It would be a long haul, but I think you could fix this dog because she really wants to be, um, she really wants to have you love her and all that. I felt very bad closing that door. And don't ask me what happened to her because I can't remember. I can't remember yesterday. That's better. So, no. Yes. That's a, that's a boy. Yes, that's called a genital check. <laughs> it's like, are they there? Ah, oh, they are. <laughs> Only boy dogs do it. <laughs> Very common with fear. Very common. If, if he weren't videotaping this, I would do it here. You know, you know, it's like, it's kind of like what the homeboys do, you know. <laughs> But only the boys do it. It's kind of, whoa, what's that? Oh my God, is it still there? Yes, it's still there. Okay. I mean, you know, when you're talking about, about, about body language, we've really just got the, 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 the tip of the iceberg here. There's so many different layers of things that we don't have time to go through here, and, and, uh, that, but that are, are really worth looking at and whatnot. Well, if, it depends. If they are actually, um, if they're letting go their anal glands, then that might cause them to do that. But he was doing it quite often. And he's just making sure. Okay, so what people do wrong with all, do all, all size dogs? They move towards the dog. 
You're really worried about the dog. He's very scared and all, and all of your nurturing instincts take over and you go, oh, you poor little thing. And you just go like this. And the dog is seeing this, you know. So think of yourself as a giant and, and, and respect the dog's space. Uh, I, know, I know I've told this story before, but it's worthwhile telling it again. Dogs all have personal space. People all have personal space. It's intruding into that space that causes the fearful dog to become aggressive. And my ex-mother-in-law had no personal space, and I have lots. <laughs> so, you know, she would, she would actually corner me. So she would she'd be talking to me. It would be, she wouldn't be saying, it wasn't nasty stuff or anything, but she'd be, she'd be, you know, talking to me, and I'd be backing up, and she'd be coming forward, and I'd be backing up, and she'd be coming forward, and I'd get against a wall, and I'm here, and I'm stuck, and she'd grab my arm, and I'd go, Dorothy! <laughs> Which was pretty darn aggressive, because it's not something that I would ordinarily do. That's what you do when you're leaning over and going towards a dog. You're putting the dog in a position where he really doesn't have much of a chance to run away, so he's going to have to fight. Eye contact, if you're going to do eye contact, make it slide past. Now, if, if it's a dominant, really bold, assertive dog, and you do eye contact, even if it's sliding past, you might get... Mm. But with most submissive dogs, you can let the eye contact slide past, especially if you squint your eyes. And they'll stop thinking of you as being a threat. So, you know, wrinkles are good. <laughs> so it's okay to get older. Okay. Um, I have here, act as if the dog is very important. I want, did a NT in there. Act as though the dog is not very important. It's not very important. Act as though everything else in the, in the room or where you are is far more interesting. It's what he does when he's meeting another dog. Oh my gosh, the smells, you would have no idea. He goes around, if it's out in the yard, he goes around and around and around the yard. These smells are just fascinating. If it's in the classroom, he does the same thing. Fascinating smells. We call it going shopping. Oh, yeah, yeah. But what he's doing is he's making the other dog feel very calm, as calm as possible. It makes him hard to use for dog-dog intros because he's so good with them that dogs that ordinarily would bite another dog won't bite him. They'll, they'll be good with him. Now, of course, I was testing a little dog the other day, and, um, and she walked up to him, and he was, he was putting his nose sideways and being really good, and she walks right up to him like this, and she goes, bite! Aww. Bit him on his nose. Aww. Yes, that's why he earns his pig's ears, <laughs> you know. So acting as though the dog is not very important is extremely important itself, and, you know, I'll fix this if I ever use this again. Huh? Oh, it is. Oh, that's right. It is. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I'm watching the clock, see, is what's happening. Um, so modifying the behavior of fearful dogs, remembering that fear is not under control of the conscious brain. Keep, it, keep, it, keep that in your conscious brain, that the dog is not under control of its own fear. So if you are going to be modifying fear-based behaviors, you have to do it, what we call work under threshold. You cannot work over threshold because it won't work. Because the dog isn't, isn't thinking at that point. The dog is just reacting. So ignore the dog. No eye contact. Allow the dog to approach you. Act nonchalant. And do appropriate petting when the dog has approached. After the dog has, has come to you. And what is appro appropriate petting? Generally, it's a, kind of offering your hand low so the dog can see it. Remember, this, this is, you know how they say, offer your hand to the dog? What you're really trying to do is offer something the dog can see approaching and does not feel that it's a threat. So if you allow your hand to approach like this, it's going to be a threat. Just having your hand beside you is not a threat. And so the dog can approach that. Appropriate petting is usually petting around here. Sometimes I find that when the dog turns away, a good petting would be petting them on the rump, not even on the side where they'll turn around and go, what are you doing? But just right on the rump. And do it for a shorter period of time than you think you ought to. So it's just a little bit and then stop. Wait till they come again. Any of you guys have cats? Ever had, a, ever had an affection aggression cat? Where you have to go one, two, stop. Good. One, two, stop. And then the next time it's one, two, three, stop. You go over threshold, bingo, they get you. Right on your arm or wherever they want to. So think of the dog as being a cat, always under threshold. <laughs>